In 2016, the Zika virus resurfaced as a sudden worldwide epidemic. 100,000 cases of Zika have been confirmed in 2016 in Brazil, with over 10,000 confirmed cases in Puerto Rico and a projected amount of 875,000 cases at the end of 2016. The Obama administration in the United States declared a public health emergency on August 12, 2016, as the virus spreads to other parts of South and North America. With these numbers, it is estimated that over 1 million people have contracted the virus around the globe. Where did Zika come from? The Zika virus has actually been around for a long time. It was first identified in 1947 in monkeys in Uganda, while scientists were routinely monitoring the yellow fever in the Zika forest, hence the name Zika. The first human cases of Zika were detected in 1952. The geographical distribution of Zika spread to India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Pakistan between 1969 and 1983, during which time there were many sporadic human cases of Zika, but no major outbreak was observed. The first major outbreak occurred in 2007 in humans on the Pacific island of Yap and Federate states of Macronesia. From 2013 to 2014, large outbreaks were observed in four other Pacific islands, most significantly in French Polynesia. Most recently, in February of 2016, the World Health Organization confirmed that the recent cases of microcephaly and neurological disorders were in fact associated with the Zika virus, declaring it a public health emergency of international concern. So what is the Zika virus? It is a vector-borne disease which means it is most commonly transmitted from the bite of infected arthropods. Examples of some arthropods are ticks, sandflies, and mosquitoes. Zika is transmitted by the Aedes mosquito, which once was only found in tropical and subtropical zones, but now has spread worldwide, allowing Zika to be easily transmitted across the globe. Other less common ways Zika can be transmitted is via sexual activity, infected pregnant women to her fetus, blood transfusions, and organ donations. The Zika virus usually incubates or remains dormant in your system for up to 3 to 12 days, after which symptoms may start to show. According to the Government of Canada, only 1 in 4 individuals infected with the Zika actually experience mild symptoms. These symptoms may include low-grade fever of about 38.5 degrees Celsius, conjectivitis that causes red eyes, vomiting, and weakness. However, the most concerning effects of Zika are its resulting health effects. Several countries have reported an association with Zika and the onset of Julian Barr syndrome, a rare autoimmune disease in which your immune system attacks your nerve cells. One way this happens is if proteins of your immune system, called antibodies, attack the surrounding protective sheath of a type of nerve cell, called a swan cell, causing them to shrink. This can cause a slow transmission of nerve signals across nerve cells. Anyone can develop the syndrome, however, it is more common in older adults over the age of 50. Symptoms include weakness in the arms and legs and trouble breathing. Another severe health effect of Zika includes microcephaly, the birth defect in which infants are born with a smaller head size as compared to other infants their age. This is due to the brain not being able to grow properly during pregnancy, resulting in compromised head growth. Pregnant women affected with Zika are at risk of their infants developing microcephaly. The infectious pandemic Zika virus is currently occurring throughout South America, Central America, and the Caribbean and United States. A 2016 study conducted by Monaghan et al. analyzed data on climate, mosquito breeding patterns, poverty, and air travel, and identified Miami, Orlando, and Houston as the three United States cities at greatest risk of Zika. The study also reported that the southeast part of the country faced the highest risk, the eastern seaboard a moderate risk, and the western United States the lowest risk. In terms of climate, meteorological conditions in the greater parts of the United States are largely unsuitable for the Aedes mosquito during the winter months. The exceptions are the previously mentioned states, where warm conditions can sustain low to moderate mosquito abundance throughout the year. Zika has also been linked to socioeconomic conditions, in that lower usage of air conditioning, poor housing infrastructure, and increased access to safe water has been linked to increased exposure to mosquitoes. Air travel patterns are a further indicator of Zika, as the virus fluctuates seasonally. July and August are the two months with the highest estimated number of passengers arriving to these areas by air from other countries, and this may increase the infection rates and the spread of the virus. Unfortunately, no cure exists for the Zika virus. 
Instead, the most common remedy is to treat the symptoms. There are also many preventative measures that one can take to slow the spread of the virus. One of the main ways to do this is the prevention of getting the mosquito bites by using netting over sleeping areas, wearing long sleeve shirts and pants, and applying bug repellent. Since Zika can also be transmitted through sexual activity, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends using condoms or abstaining from sex for approximately six months after the onset of symptoms or latest exposure. Finally, as you watch this video, research is making breakthroughs as multiple vaccines have progressed to clinical trials. Though much more research is needed, there is hope for the eradication of this virus. So at the end of the day, the Zika virus is not just an airborne disease and is not contagious by merely being around individuals that are infected. The virus spreads predominantly through mosquito bites by the Aedes mosquito, sex, mother to fetus, and blood transfusion. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to www.demystifyingmedicine.ca.